you know, you're talking it's dollars. Great. So I was no, 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 great. Grant. <laughs> grant the employee here. It's, it's early for me. <laughs> okay, well, it is 11 o'clock on this Tuesday, May 2nd, and I will call this City of Lacey Transportation Committee uh, meeting to order. Can I get a motion? You're the only one who can do it. Mr. Chair, I move to approve the agenda as posted. It has been moved. We do not have a second. I will second. And uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 There can't be any opposition. So with that, we will uh, move into our single agenda item. Looks like we have a 2022 Transportation Maintenance Annual Report. And Scott Johnston reporting, who is the Transportation Maintenance Supervisor. Yes, absolutely. I'll bring up the screen. Sure. So the transportation maintenance department it consists of stormwater, streets, signs and markings, and electrical. Um, each one of those sections has their own budget program. Um, with screen's not shared. Okay. Is there some way we can get Robin on the screen? Yeah. Yeah. You can share there. Bottom right hand side there's Scott. Nope, nope, nope. There you go. There you go. Okay, sorry there about that. You have a question, no Rob? You got your you got your question hand raised. Yeah, I was just gonna tell him that the screen wasn't shared yet. Don't worry, I'll speak up if I need something. Okay, all right, thanks. Uh, each of these sections has their own budget. So you've got uh, three that come from the uh, general fund and one one is a utility. These are our entire crews. Um, uh, we actually have another de department assistant that we've added uh, to the shop down at City Hall. The executive assistant uh, works under Scott Devlin, which is my uh, supervisor. So, um, but this is the entire staff that we have, and we should have hired a new electrician by this point. He's uh, we're going through that process right now. So, got that going. Um, our senior techs that run each one of these groups. Um, this is a list of some of the, the assignments that they have. Um, they plan, schedule, and direct the work activities, the assigned crews, monitor day-to-day -day operations, um, anticipate and troubleshoot problems, uh, and assure staff respond quickly to uh, uh, and appropriately to citizen concerns. Um, they participate as a fully skilled technician in maintenance, repair, and installation of related field items, perform frequent field inspections. Um, they go out and kind of set forth some of the work that's going to be coming on by the by the crews and, and get that scheduled for them. They perform a lot of our construction reviews that come into the city. They'll sit down and go through the plan set and make sure it kind of fits into you know the city of Lacey's game plan. Um, there's some things that we've added, you know, new storm requirements and stuff like that, that we'll go through and add, add parts and pieces to that as well. Um, they do the administrative function of all the work that gets done by their crews, uh, as far as the work orders coming in and stuff like that. As they get completed, they, like I said, they also assign some of that work, but they, they track all of the improvements and uh, stuff that happen in there so that we have proper documentation for everything. Um, they also assist me in, in future goals, budgeting goals, uh, wants and needs of each crew. And we try and sit down and make a budget plan off of that. Each year. How are work orders prioritized? Um, it, it's really, it depends on the type of work. We, we have emergency stuff that comes in um, that we hit immediately. You know, we have, we have call outs and stuff like that. You know, exposed wires, down light poles. We've had a, a real big issue when we hit the electrical side. Uh, I think in 2021, we had eight pole knockdowns and this year we've had 18 or in 2022, we've had 18. So, um, you know, calls like that are emergency calls, um, big potholes, snow and ice, things like that are all super high priority and emergency type stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, everything else, it, it just depends. We have a crew that uh, like in streets, they have a crew that works on sidewalks. 
one that works on potholes, one that works on cutbacks. So each one of those crews were constantly doing stuff. If something gets called in by a citizen during that time, we, we try to get to that as quickly as we can during that process. So sometimes some of those will uh, increase a work orders need or whatever. Um, as far as sidewalks are concerned, we try and take care of the larger sidewalk issues that we have out there. There are so many of them. So we'll get to that here in a second, but that's, you know, you try to prioritize um, stormwater stuff meeting our, our new storm requirements. Well, we do that as well. And I'll kind of get into that as we go through the process here. Now, interject if I can for one second yeah. too. There's also seasonal type work. Mm -hmm. So for instance, like crack sealing the roads, doing mastic on the roads, those are seasonal type jobs that are also performed for, you know, the work requests that we, we create um, and preventive maintenance tasks that print out on the computer at a regular basis and intervals just from years history of knowing when we have to do certain tasks. Okay. Uh, and those those tasks too are yeah. some width organized and rent pieces of equipment for our kids. Okay. Yeah, so and that'll, that you'll see that coming up here in this. As a former maintenance technician, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, like, a stack of work orders. I'm like, okay, sure. so if it's a toilet or lights or whatever, then I can get to it first. Uh, and then if it's a paint job, I I've got like 30 days on yeah. so, so you know what I mean? So I was just wondering exactly. like the, the flow and how. Yeah, there are certain tasks that we can only do in certain times of the year as, as much as it rains around here. So a lot of the road repairs we're trying to do in the summertime, the, the biggest need is having, you know, uh, people managing traffic and stuff for some of those. That's a lot of the seasonals that we pull in are to help man that, that responsibility that we add on. You know, I actually do have a question. Yeah. Okay, so you know that stuff that we use, the, the crack sealer for the mm -hmm. roads, okay? Um, it has like zero traction. And if there's a lot of it, then it has the ability to cause you to slip unless you have great tires, right? Uh, but there was, an, there was a time when I could not afford great tires. Um, have, have, is it possible that we could, I don't know how to say this. It actually comes with sand and, and great. Does it have sand? It, it comes with it. It just eventually will wear out of the, it works its way to the top and comes off. That's what, okay. Yeah. Okay. Because, man, I remember one time, I, that's how I know when I need tires. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> is this on your right now? No, it's in my car. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so it's like, oh, man, I just slipped. Because especially coming down, uh, coming this way on Pacific, mm -hmm. you know, right? It's, that road is apparently prone to cracks and it's got a lot of, I mean, it looks like a, you know, a gray and black spider web in some areas. And so I was just wondering if, if there was a, a, a traction, something that we were using to prevent slippage. It's super dangerous for motorcycles. Mm -hmm. I, but I mean, like I'm, I'm a fair weather rat. I don't ride in the rain, but I see them out there. Yeah. And I'm like, you're a brave soul. Hope you got good uh, tires on your bike because this road is slick. Yeah. Absolutely. So it has, it already it, has it, sand it built does. in. It, it's got stuff in it. And we also put that over it when we're, once we put it on the ground, they, okay. they, you know, when it dries out and stuff. So, but it does, it wears off of there fairly rapidly. Okay. Good to know. Thank you. So moving on to the next slide. Um, the stormwater department, uh, like it says here, uh, 111 acres of storm ponds that they maintain uh, their seasonal staff that comes on board. Uh, does a lot of the mowing and stuff for us and maintains those ponds in the growing season. Um, we've got 50 city storm ponds and 6,524 catch basins. We go through with the MS4, which is the, the city's stormwater permit, um, our, our system, our MS4 system that we have, every one of our catch basins every year, which a lot of cities don't do, we, we clean every catch basin. So that, that's something good. Uh, in the last year, we, we also have an illicit discharge uh, program that we manage and the illicit discharge. Um, anytime we have a car accident and antifreeze or coolant uh, products from different stuff, hydraulics, engine oil, um, any of those things hit the roadway, our standby person responds immediately or crew during the workday will respond immediately and get that up off the ground before it enters our, our MS4 system. Put the socks so, down. Put the socks down if we have to, or if we need to clean out, if it does hit a catch basin, we get that catch basin cleaned out immediately with our factor truck and, and get it cleaned up. So um, a lot of a lot of cities and groups don't have that opportunity and they don't have that quick of a response to, to getting that done. But that's something with 133 spills are usually, most of them are car accidents. Um, and then our sweepers run daily. So five days a week, 
Um, they are on a grant program. Uh, with that grant program, they are tracked. So they, they're made to track and go down our main arterial roads is, is what the grant is for. We do try to hit side streets and stuff like that. One thing we do run into uh, is they know very well which day is garbage day for that neighborhood, but also the, the trees that the neighborhood is responsible for caretaking, um, maintaining those trees up off of the roadway so that the sweepers don't get damaged. Sure. If that is a situation, then those are neighborhoods that we can't go into because of the damage it's caused to, to the sweepers going in there. So are the HOAs aware of that? I don't know if they're aware of that okay. part of it, but well, I guess most of the HOAs uh, during the HOA, uh, oh, we had a big HOA academy that mm -hmm. the city put on. I went there and actually took that and explained it, and a lot of them were not. Okay. A lot of them did not know that that was there, and, and a few of them have, have actually fought back against that. And it's it's uh, why they don't want to limit up to to get, <laughs> to get services. I would limit that's. Up. Some of them do not, and and we we try really hard to work with them and 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 try and explain the process to them. The trees are actually owned by the homeowners association or the house directly in front of it. Okay. So a lot of homeowners associations have taken that over because so. we do have some neighborhoods where a main arterial goes like right through it. Uh, Lake Point, for example, uh, Stockton Horizon Point, New Campus, Campus yeah. Glen Drive. Yeah, and we could. Are you saying that we could? not on grant money, clean those streets, but uh, on general dollars, we can clean those streets. We, we try to go off and do side streets periodically off of, off the, cause we, the fact that we do it every day gives us an opportunity to hit some of those with the, some of the spare hours that we have, mm -hmm. we will try and hit some of those side streets. So gotcha. if there, if it's available, we'll be there. And if the tree is limbed up high enough. If it's limbed up high enough, we can get right up against the curb. Nice. Yeah. All right. This is this is just a graph with with all the different hours and how the stormwater personnel use their hours. Um, we just kind of went over the street sweeping. Uh, the big thing is the brake dust. The type of sweeper we have too is another big one. Mm -hmm. It's not your general. Um, th this actually gets brake dust and all the little micros off off the ground. So it's got a huge suction system. What that um, big old across the back of it thing. No, no, that that big thing across the back is, uh, yeah. If, you, if you're looking at it from the back, yeah, it's part of that. But they actually have to monitor the openings and closing of of that to get more suction. Sure. You know, during leave time, it's it's pretty bad. Uh, one problem that we do have is with uh, groundwater when it's raining all the time. Oh, sure. You know, trying to get rid of that, um, it, it makes things very difficult as well. So how we operate that is, is a little more difficult. But uh, yeah, it's part of that grant is to get these particulates. So that's kind of the, a, a big part of it. <clears throat> like we said before, they go through and they inspect all of our storm catch basins, ponds and galleries. Uh, we do have some new swirlers that are coming in that will eliminate some debris from going into our, our uh, storm ponds and stuff like that. So those are uh, nice and easy for us to show up with the vector truck. We can take everything out of the middle of it and, and move on. Um, like I said, the car accidents and stuff like that. We spent 860 hours alone over the last three years uh, going to calls. Uh, we currently have one business facility stormwater inspector uh, at the shop that is in this group as well. Uh, most of our stormwater inspectors work up at City Hall. One works uh, in a community development right across the hall. Um, the other one works up in water resources. They take care of uh, like homeowners associations and stuff like that. Ours takes care of business storm ponds like, you know, the big storm pond out in Fred Myers parking lot, sure. and things like that. Well, they go, yeah, they go through it. And, check all of those. So um, he's heavily involved in that permitting. Some of the projects that our groups work on, uh, some of the floodings out on the road that we've had to deal with. Uh, this one here was actually, we actually put in a little gallery here for uh, a home that had been getting flooded over, I want to say it's on 26th Avenue. So and this is part of them doing that. This so, is Rainier Road. I figured. Yeah. 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 That's our 
seasonal. So that, that top left pitcher yeah. is that the one we did that in response to a um, to a resident's complaint o over several years. Yeah, yeah. It, it it had been running down the road and um, it just uh, kept flooding the garage house. So we actually put in a gallery there and, and some curbing. Nice. How old is that picture? Uh, I want to say two years. Okay. Electrical department. Um, we have 78 signals throughout the, the town and some of them that we take care of also are county ones. So we do take care of some of the counties, uh, street signals. City, we're a city now. City, ish, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. We're the biggest city. We're a city. Um, some of the cities, uh, uh, area. So we have uh, some of the counties as well that we take care of uh, that are closer to ours. So um, last night we or last year we did 298 street light repairs. 6,221 street lights are in the city in the annexed areas that we've grown to. And like I said, we had 18 light pole knockdowns. Uh, the hardest thing with the light pole knockdowns is uh, getting them. We can order them all day long, but uh, the last group took us almost 18 months to get. Let's let's um let's unpack light pole knockdowns just for a quick minute. Yeah. Uh, so somebody hits a light pole with enough force to knock it to the ground mm -hmm. or knock it to an angle. Mm -hmm. um, what happens if it damages something? I mean, that would be on the, the citizen. Too, like that, okay. Yeah, that would has, be a part of their. Is it has, have any ever fell on personal property? I don't think so. I don't think we've had any. Oh, I'm, I'm sure there's some that, that the light pole is hit, but we I don't think we've had any extra damage or anything done due to a light pole knockdown. And how much does a light pole cost? I could get that number for you. <laughs> They're pretty expensive. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay, because one of my friends about five grand for a light pole. Yeah. Okay. And our technicians cost to go out and install the light pole. What's that in full time hours? A day or two? Couple no, guys. Well, they, well. no, just, they could do it in a day. They can do it they in can a day. Put it, if we if we have the the pole and the arm and stuff, they can do that in a day. If they have to pull new wires and stuff, they'll usually go out and prep that okay. and have that ready. Uh, one thing that uh, can add a lot of time to it, like I said, other than getting the light pole, is that the base is damaged. So they have breakaways on them, and usually they'll snap right off and, and drop to the ground. Okay. Uh, if for some reason it has damaged that base or moved that base. The whole thing needs to be replaced and we have to contract do, we, do we keep them in reserve or is it are we just that was going to be my question like do can we have a, a supply of them ready to go if we assume pole. somebody's going to hit a light pole so have some in, 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 the, the, in the shed light pole knockdown would slow down we would have <laughs> <laughs> we ran out of supply because of the number and then i have told them to order more than what we need so that we do have a stock we did have a stock they just because of the knockdowns we've we've actually fallen behind on those so we're, we we're trying some. to get we're trying to get caught up so that we have a supply and reserve we're but we're not there yet okay correct yeah they actually come out of texas so mm -hmm. uh we, we had a a long wait for them so as soon as we can we will have we will build that back up again so growing pains it is it is get negative. some communication around that tell folks to stop running into light poles and yeah. then maybe we'll, we'll be able to get caught up so if it's not a hit and run, you know, then we can recoup the charges from the individuals that hit the light poles and damage them. So when somebody hits a light pole, are they, are they usually responsible enough to call and say, hey, I just knocked down one of your light poles? <laughs> yeah, or is that how that works? Or the vehicle's incapacitated. But, uh, yes. Somebody saw them or the vehicle's yeah. incapacitated. It was an accident that the police respond to and there's a police report and we really have that. But if not, and, and could we be a big truck size light pole over. We don't know. It'll yeah. just, just leave the scene. So there's the mystery ones and then there's the yeah, correct. Okay. A lot of times they'll just damage the foundation. And we have the conversation then do we take it down now and fix the foundation? Yeah. So are there damaged poles out there that we don't know about? Most likely? Yes. <laughs> they could almost guarantee it. Yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. Why? Well, so, I, I mean it's it's pretty visible when something's been hit. Yeah. yeah. So I mean you don't have a case where you have a pole that looks perfect and there's something damaged down below. If yeah, so yeah, I mean it's they're they're gonna they're, if they're gonna damaged. hit it before it will damage a bow a bolt. You know it will dent the pole, damage the pole to where visually that stands out. Yeah, it's, and, I, and it's I spun noticed. aluminum, so it's it, if a truck or something hits it, it's gonna make a mark. If it doesn't knock it down, it's you'll you'll see it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So for example, the we're doing a signal pole signal pole 
not light pole, but signal pole replacement at Slater Kinney. I remember seeing that. And so that was a pole that had been damaged multiple times, but it wasn't falling down, but it had been damaged enough times that we decided to move it. So, okay. Yeah. What else you got? So the electricians, they take care of uh, all, all city owned facilities. They go in and, and do the electrical work there. They do street lights, signal lighting, um, just about everything that has to do with electrical in the city. They, they're kind of a jack of all trades electrically. So um, like when we were going out looking for somebody to come in and do that, trying to find somebody that has uh, a lot of this background uh, in city type work. So it is, yeah, it's a little bit of everything. So um, they've also gone through and done the LED conversions. These are some of the cabinets. We are starting to get cabinets wrapped. The first one is out here on the corner. Um, and it's like an overview of the city of Lacey, but uh, tagging and stuff like that. They spend a lot of time getting stuff like that cleaned up. You can see one of our uh, near miss light pole incidents right here. Oh yeah. Um, and then this is just kind of, you know, some of the street lighting and stuff that they do. If I can interject on the, yeah. uh, on the cabinet wraps. The, uh, there are going to be two series of, of wraps that go out throughout the city. There's going to be one focused in the Midtown area. It's going to be focusing on promoting Midtown brand and live, learn, earn, create, and everything's going on over in College Street over to Slater County. And then around the community, we're going to do more wraps on a historic basis that would be rolling out as well. So, yeah, I remember when we approved that uh, and Shannon was was taking the, the, the point on that. Uh, so I'm, just, I'm really glad to see it. And, and there's, there's two projects. There's the Midtown project, which Sheriff Shelling is leading out of community economic development. And that's the first one that was put on over here. So we leave, you go out Third Avenue, you'll see it on the corner. And then Shannon's leading the, the citywide along with the historic uh, wraps and banners. Cool. Have we talked about doing like an art contest or art submissions for those? I don't remember if that's something that Lacey's talked about doing. We um, um, had some. I guess casual or informal conversation about that potential. The uh, first step was you know, for Midtown area promoting the Midtown brand, but there could be opportunities like the Lacey loves to read, you know, library. Or yeah, public, yeah. Those type of things we could do like next to the library or be opportunistic where the wrap or the cabinet is with proximity to what's going on around that that intersection. It'd be a neat opportunity to promote arts in Lacey. Yep. Employee of the month. <laughs> uh, but uh, next is the street department. They've got about 417.8 lane miles of street, uh, 224 miles of sidewalk. So uh, managing our sidewalks is, is something that is a, a big part of that. The 6,179 square feet of sidewalk replaced, that includes our sidewalk sucker lifting it up. It, it's stuff that normally would have been jackhammered out, the roots taken out. We can actually pick it up, move it out of the way, cut the roots out of the way and, and sand it and put it back down in place so that we're not having to re -pour. So it's, it's a day of type of replacement. You don't have to wait for a concrete company to come in and pour and, mm -hmm. and do all that. So that's included in our replacement. If you add some of the other funding that we get uh, from, is it the TBD fund? We also go out, that total would be almost 30,000. It's 29,900 and something uh, with neighborhoods that we've used TBD funds where the sidewalks were so bad that we actually went in and did a did a replacement of all the damage and and also replaced the the street trees on that. Do we do we cut like at the nearest expansion joint or do we just for for complete for to take it off and so stuff some of the stuff that we do, we will cut expansion joints for the panels that we do pick up. The other ones we we replace, we try to replace a full panel so that it looks more natural in there. Um, if there's a lot of damage and stuff like that, sometimes you'll have to take half a panel and, and go back and just add that extra expansion joint. Yeah. It depends on how, how far out the tree roots go. So for example, you just if you replace one panel, well, now are you causing a tripping hazard on the next one down yeah. because it's slightly raised as well? So you have to kind of look at the full right because after it's done, if you're here and then there, right? right. So so whatever. sometimes we end up having to go back a, a little further if you've just got one that's raised right. up, you know, an inch, but then the one next to it's raised up, 
half an inch, you know, you have to kind of go back as far as you need to make it all ADA complete. Or you can leave them like that. It could be a takeoff ramp. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kids will have fun. Yeah, the skateboarders don't like it when we fix them. Yeah, they don't like it. <laughs> I was going to say it. The, the sidewalk sucker that we have, it looks like a giant uh, buffer and use an excavator to pick it up and you'll go by and there will be, like she said, if, if the roots go further out, there'll be three panels stacked up trying to get all the roots and stuff out of those areas. If if it's if so many of the roots have to be taken, we actually end up taking the tree as well. Through. So in 2021, we spent nearly 700 hours Crack ceiling, that's the crack ceiling that you're talking about. Yes. Also, it, it's a good plan to, like you'll see people go out and crack seal right before they do an overlay over the top or, or a, a, some sort of a sealant because this, this is preventing further damage being done underneath that. Mm -hmm. So it's actually recommended that we go out and do this prior to them doing a slurry seal or something like that as well. So it just helps the process. Mastic is another process that you'll see. Usually you'll see this more in the uh, travel lane of the wheels and tires. Uh, you'll get a lot of that alligatoring and stuff in the in the concrete. Um, and this is just a, it's kind of like crack seal, but it, a little more durable. Mm -hmm. And uh, you'll get a, a pattern like this. So you'll see those wider strips going down the road. And that assists us in, in water entering underneath the the asphalt and stuff like that. So uh, lets the road last a little bit longer. On the last slide for crack sealing, yep. we've increased the amount of crack sealing that we're doing per year. Oh yeah, we, we so, doubled it last year. So I'm sorry, I missed that. Was, it's true to try to cover the whole city and all, all of the yeah. crack sealing done that needs to be done. Okay. Um, before we were just doing what we could in a certain time span. And in budget. Um, yeah, and within budget, but we've increased that budget and time frame. Oh, sure. So okay. yeah. we want to either cover with our crew or hire a contractor to get all the crack sealing throughout the entire city done every single year. Gotcha. It, it just helps us preserve our roadways, which we have a really good uh, rating on our roads here in Lacey. Okay. So and that's part of it. So. <laughs> Sorry, I missed that. <clears throat> This is some of the crews. This this section here, this was uh, Rainier Road after the flood. Oh, okay. It had gone through and, and broke everything up. Uh, we did put road closure signs on both ends of this, and people still drove through. Um, and this is the damage that happens when people drive through it. So it softens the underbelly of everything, and when they're driving over, it's just blowing stuff out. So um, this is the crews actually doing that section of roadway here. You can see up above here some of the roots. This is actually a can't get this out of the, but this right here is actually some of the roots underneath the panel that's been pulled up for sidewalk replacement. And this is our snow and ice group here working out, yeah, taking care of that stuff. So and this this is our our mastic group right here. So they they used to use two two screeds to go and, and push that along. And now we've got a drag box that we use that makes it look a little more square. And, and Signs and markings have 99 miles of edge road line that they uh, they take care of. Uh, 377 intersections with uh, legends and symbols. A lot of those are, are heated down on um, 120 miles of raised pavement markers. That's the little bumps you see in the road. Mm -hmm. So they, they go out and replace those yearly. If there's roads where the reflectivity of them gets lower and lower, they'll go and replace those. And you can usually see pretty instantly if you're driving at night, they'll be super bright. And they have just the plain white ones with reflectors. They've got, they'll go out and they'll replace the ones for fire hydrants or blue. And also if you take a turn down a road, wrong way on a one-way street, you'll see them show red. Mm -hmm. So if people don't know that, that's a that's a good, you're seeing red on the road, you're going the wrong way. Yeah, when we switch to one way over here, there's a lot of that going on. Yeah. So uh, we have 9,404 street signs and uh, a good portion of those, the, the name street signs, we build all of our own and they go out, like with a lot of the annexations, we have to go out and replace a lot of the older signs because the reflectivity on them and, and their engineering grade. What's the lifespan of a, a sign? That's a good question. Uh, it, it depends on how much sun and stuff. Yeah. What's that? About 10 years? For 10 years. For 10 years, okay. This is our graph where, where their work is done most uh, for them, sign repair. 
just like street lights, we get a lot of pole, pole knockdowns for signs and stuff like that. So they'll go out and repair those. Usually next morning, we have temporary sign poles that we put up for uh, uh, sign knockdowns, especially if it's a stop sign or something that has to be replaced immediately. So we'll, we have temporary signs that we put up for overnight until we can get a crew in to fix it in the morning. But it is a fairly small crew for the city of Lacey too. It's uh, three, three folks. Here's the two of them making signs. Uh, uh, it's, we've got this wonderful table so we can build just about any type of sign now. Uh, a lot of the speed limits stop and stuff like that we'll order in just because they're already done. You know, if you're already paying for the aluminum blank and everything else, it's a little cheaper process than using the man hours because this is the same two folks because the three people count with their senior tech too, who's back putting stuff not only into our management program for HTE, but it also has to be put into a program for our insurance policies sure. and when they were replaced and stuff like that. Um, this this is them putting the RPMs down, the little the little buttons on the road. This is actually one that would face for the wrong way. The other side would be for properly traveling traffic. And this is that little device uh, that we have here behind it. Uh, you can't see it right now, but can we move this here? So when you see him pushing this one over here, that thing is extremely heavy and it's about 400 degrees sitting right in front of you, mm. uh, burning tar. So it is uh, quite expensive. And we bought this little scooter that hooks onto it and makes that extremely heavy device a lot more manageable. So uh, the amount that they put down last year was like twofold that they'd ever done before. So it's it's helped them out a lot. They also use the same little scooter on their painter for, for painting like parking lots and stuff like that. So it's uh, coming extremely handy. <laughs> Who found the scooter? Uh, we actually so, found it from Parks. So we drove by one day, and it's like, what is that? It's technically so. a line driver. Okay. And uh, they designed that, you know, to push painters. So, like, you do this long stride painting. Um, we bought one in Parks Department back in, I think, 2000, maybe 12 or so, to paint all the soccer fields and line all the athletic fields. And you can line it, like, 12 miles an hour. It's, it's pretty fast. Uh, so... Georgine came out, she took a look at it, was a little apprehensive about trying it on the street, thought it might be a little too squirrely, you know, get out of traffic or whatever. And they tried it out and thought it was amazing. So they bought one. Yeah, so what? Yeah, it's, this it's totally changed the whole program. <laughs> it's so much easier. This device here, I actually went out and did this and uh, it felt like the tires were flat. <laughs> I kept looking like, <laughs> it's one of these flat, but it was just, it was that awkward push. And you can see this, this is actually, I took this picture, it was, uh, right after they'd done down Rumble Road, how much brighter all these all these lines are. So, but they take care of all, all of these lines that you see in the intersections, all the signs you see through this whole roundabout. And that is another thing too, is you'll, every once in a while we'll find advertising in these roundabouts, which we will remove pretty rapidly. Yeah, it's hard enough for people to see in, in those that we'll go and take those out. Uh, this is this is where they've spent most of their time in, in streets so or uh, in the transportation department uh, a lot of snow and ice um, this one over here is our, our storm water traffic signals uh, when we <laughs> when we take their sandwich board out of the city right away and bring it here to city hall and set it over here right mm -hmm. uh, do they know we, we don't have like a card we can leave for them or anything like that i know that because uh, I was yeah. a vendor at one time at a little espresso shop down the street, and I didn't know. I just set it on the, you know, on the as close to the road as I could get, and then uh, it was gone. And uh, so I called, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, I was like, "Oh yeah, it's probably here. It's probably yeah. waiting for you by the dumpster." Are we still doing that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's there's two aspects that pick up the signs. The streets department, as they see if it's causing problems, like in the middle of a roundabout. Yeah. Then there's our code enforcement officer that goes out and also addresses a legal sign. So if they're on the sidewalk or or in in the just off the sidewalk and they're too far away from the building, it will pick them up. Okay. Yeah. And a lot of frequent customers are the are the realtors. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. They we kind of see the same, you know. Hey, well, well I'll I'll even call them on the weekend because yep. their numbers on the thing yep. and be like, you need to remove those. And they're like, well, I'm kind of busy right now. And it's like, well, you know, if we have to do it, technically we should be charging 
for the hours that people are working. You know, it's, it's if you call somebody in to remove something and we, and we don't do that. I, I, I pick them up a lot of times. I'll leave them in the back of my truck for a while. If I'm out driving about and, and there's some that are in a roundabout or something, I'll stop and pick them up. And I usually keep the, the sandwich signs and things in the back of my truck yeah, because uh, for a few we, days until somebody calls. If we didn't have this kind of enforcement, the roundabout would be nothing but advertisements, wouldn't it? <laughs> yes. Yeah. If you see the county ones, if you drive outside on the, on the county, there's a few of them out off of Yelm Highway. As you're heading towards Yelm, there's probably 15 signs inside that one. And <laughs> it just makes visibility really difficult. Yeah, it's a distraction. Yeah, it is. But that's all we have. That, okay. that is our group, if you have any other questions. I do not. I think I asked all the questions that I could come up with as we went along. And uh, if you don't mind, I, if I could have a copy of your presentation. Absolutely. And then that way I can we report can, back to council. We could email um, it out. All three of us, if you if you get to uh, you know, send that out or Tabitha or whoever. Uh, anyway, um, that brings us to the end of our agenda. So uh, without any objection, I will call this meeting adjourned. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Great information. Good job, Scott.